Good afternoon and welcome to our STS-107 post-launch press conference. We have as participants today Linda Hamm, Shuttle Program Launch Integration Manager, and Mike Leinbach, the Shuttle Launch Director here at Kennedy Space Center. And we'll begin with statements from each of these and then we'll open it up for your questions. Linda? Good afternoon and welcome. As most of you witnessed today, an outstanding picture-perfect launch of STS-107. The mission, the launch might have looked a little different because it was a 39 degree inclination. Most of us are used to seeing these days the 51.6 degree inclination flights that we launch the space station. This is the first mission in a while that is completely dedicated to science. It's the first one in several years. It's a 16 day flight with a dual shift. We have a crew of seven. Four will be up on one shift and three will be up on the other shift so that we can work the science and the experiments uh, 24 hours a day. This is the first flight of the SpaceHab double research search module. We are flying a complement of international payloads, NASA payloads. We have payloads from the European Space Agency. We're doing life sciences, material sciences, and microgravity science. As you know, this flight's been on the books for quite a while, so many of the scientists and experimenters around the world are real anxious to start this flight, and we're extremely happy that we were able to launch today. We do have, uh, as you know, Colonel Raymond, uh, there's been a lot of talk in the press already about him flying and his experiment, the main one that he's doing is the Mediterranean Israel dust experiment. Well, he'll investigate dust storms over the Mediterranean Sea and also in the Pacific Ocean. Um, so it was just an outstanding launch, just a beautiful day, great weather, and uh, the launch countdown went exceptionally well. And so we're glad to be here with you for a post-launch press conference. Thanks, Linda. And now Mike Leinbach, our shuttle launch director. Thanks, Bruce. First, I'd like to congratulate the, uh, the main experimenters that have waited so long for Columbia to take you guys to orbit um, and to the Columbia processing team. Uh, we were first on the runway. Columbia was first on the runway last summer when we had to stand down for a period of time, and we did that successfully. did some more ch checks on the vehicle, uh, and the payload folks uh, responded to that delay ex exceedingly well. And now I hope uh, they get tremendous science on orbit in their 16-day mission. Uh, the last day of the processing flow, the launch today, it, it went very, very well. I really don't have anything to report to you. Uh, from my perspective, it, uh, it was very easy, which is nice uh, to say. And it was very pretty looking out the window of the firing room. So again, congratulations to everybody around the world that's worked so hard to pull this mission together. It's, it's going to be a fantastic mission. Thanks, Mike. OK, let's uh, take some questions with your name and affiliation, please. OK, Stefano. Uh, Stefano Colleghiamo, Popular Mechanics. Uh, how different was it uh, for the launch team and for you today? Uh, how di different was it from uh, having a five minute window versus a two and a half window? Two and a half hour window, I mean. Well, this is the first one we've had like this for a while. Um, uh, I thought we were going to have to use some of the window uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, typically, uh, Columbia is a little bit difficult to get off the pad and then performs outstandingly on orbit. Today it was just very easy. Uh, we launched on time, didn't have to use any of the two, two and a half hour window. The hold at T-minus nine minutes, is, as you referred to, uh, for the station flights is normally 40 minutes long and this one was only 10, so that one passed pretty quickly and uh, we were ready to go. It, it, uh, we practiced this uh, differently in our launch countdown simulations, whether we're flying to the station with a five minute window uh, or, as we did for this particular flow, practicing with the uh, two and a half hour launch window and the shortened holds. So we were ready for it, and the ship proved that she was ready for it, too. Okay, thanks. Um, right here? All right. Brenda Nat Mason for Orlando Television. What, what are going to be the astronauts? <laughs> what are the astronauts planning to do on their free time or downtime in the mission? Many of the times, if they have some free time on orbit, and being a 16-day mission, they will get some half days off in there. They end up taking a lot of pictures and photographs out the window. They end up uh, doing the kind of house cleaning things that they feel like would be appropriate. They use their time according to what they would like to do. It's free time for them. They also have exercise periods on orbit. OK, thanks. Uh, Phil, right here. Phil Chen Earth News for Mike. Um, uh, during the nine minutes account, uh, I think it was around seven or eight minutes or so, there was uh, something about somebody came on the loop and said something about a redundant loss, something, keep counting, uh, it's okay. Can you tell us about what was happening there? Yeah, we're, we're almost kind of getting used to that. I, I hate to say that was another uh, RF glitch, we call them, the radio frequency glitch. It was the uh, 
uh, the, the alternate transmission uh, source from the vehicle for the telemetry. And uh, we got another glitch today. And I think as I reported to you last time, we're studying a way to, to uh, get off of that particular system and go strictly with hardline to our fiber optic system. And, and one day we'll get there. We're not there yet. So in the meantime, we've developed these, these pre-planned procedures to get us through that issue. And, and uh, we didn't have to hold as we did the first time uh, we did this, this issue uh, three or four flights ago. And uh, talking to the Air Force, uh, everything went very smoothly from a security s uh, standpoint of view, and uh, I guess uh, all of uh, the additional uh, security in, in, the, in the area helped. Uh, but uh, how transparent was it to, to your team? I suppose the guys who lived in South Cocoa Beach had a little bit more traffic to deal with around the Hilton, uh, but uh, uh, was there any, uh, obviously it was not completely transparent, but how close was it to being transparent to you guys? I'll go first. I, I, it was transparent to me because I come in so early. It was uh, around midnight when I got to work, so it was transparent to me. Um, there were a couple of folks on the launch team that were a few minutes late um, passing through the security checks, so we responded to that. No big deal. It was, uh, we, we expected a little bit of delay, and, and we dealt with it. No big deal. And I agree with that also. I didn't have any uh, issue getting in because it was not midnight or so. Um, a few people delayed, but it was really not an issue. And we. As a program, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone, all the local uh, police force and all the folks that participated in, in this activity. It was really outstanding effort by everyone. Thank you. All right, right back here. Randy Avera, Randolph Publishing. Uh, with so much science on board this mission for the landing recovery operations, whether that's at KSC or at an alternate site, are there any special operations that are involving the science on board as far as the runway activities and, uh, for example, tow to the orbiter or in the case of an alternate site if it had to be uh, as it would be ferried on the shuttle carrier aircraft? We do have um, folks that are going to support our backup landing site, Dryden. In case we do land there, there will be additional payload folks. Um, and it will take us a little longer to get the payloads that we take out on the SLF or at the Dryden facility if we land there. Um, after landing, it will take a little longer to get those payloads out for quick turnaround. But we have all the procedures in place and the people will be there to support. Okay, right back up here. Randy Siegel, WSTU for Mike. Uh, with Columbia gone, finally, <coughs> how do we stand towards uh, Atlantis for our next flight? Atlantis is looking good. Uh, she's processing through the, the orbiter processing facility and, and is, is right on schedule for the rollout date. Uh, so we're looking for an early March launch of, of Atlantis on STS-114. No issues to report there. She's ready to go. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Okay, we'll wrap it up and uh, return to our mission uh, programming. Thank you very much.